Type Ia supernovae are among the most powerful and remarkable explosions in the universe. But what sets them apart is not just their brightness, it's their consistency. These explosions have become one of astronomy's most critical tools for measuring cosmic distances and revealing the large-scale structure of the universe. Unlike many other types of supernovae, a Type Ia event does not originate from a single massive star running out of fuel. Instead, it begins in a binary star system where a compact remnant called a white dwarf orbits a companion star. Over long periods, the white dwarf pulls material from its partner. As its mass increases, the pressure and temperature in its core rise. When it reaches a critical threshold known as the chandra Sekar limit, about 1.4 times the mass of the Sun, the conditions at the center become so extreme that a thermonuclear runaway occurs. This runaway nuclear burning destroys the white dwarf in a single catastrophic explosion. The result is a sudden flash of light so intense that a type Ia supernova can temporarily outshine its entire host galaxy. Because the explosion happens under nearly the same physical conditions every time, type 1 neon A supernovae reach very similar peak luminosities. This reliability allows astronomers to use them as standard candles, objects with known intrinsic brightness that can be used to measure distances across the universe. Type Ia spectra also lack hydrogen lines, which helps astronomers distinguish them from other supernova types. After the explosion, no compact remnant is left behind. The entire star is unbound and dispersed. The study of type Ia supernovae has had profound cosmological implications. Observations of distant type Ia explosions in the late 1990s led to the discovery that the expansion of the universe is accelerating, driven by a mysterious component now known as dark energy, a result honored with the 2011 Nobel Prize in Physics. Type 1b supernovae represent one of the most dramatic endings for massive stars. Unlike Type 1a events, which result from thermonuclear explosions of white dwarfs, a Type 1b supernova is a core collapse supernova, triggered when a massive star exhausts its nuclear fuel and can no longer support itself against gravity. But what separates type 1b from other core collapse types is the absence of hydrogen in its outer layers. A star destined to become type Ib begins with a mass at least eight times greater than the Sun. Over millions of years it burns hydrogen, then helium, and eventually heavier elements in its core. As the star evolves extreme stellar winds, or the gravitational influence of a close binary companion, strip away its hydrogen envelope. Once this layer is lost, the exposed core continues burning heavier elements until it reaches iron, a point where nuclear fusion can no longer produce energy. When the iron core becomes too massive to support itself, it collapses in a fraction of a second. Protons and electrons fuse into neutrons, the core rebounds, and a powerful shockwave propagates outward. The star detonates, ejecting its outer layers into space. Because the hydrogen layer is missing, the resulting spectrum shows no hydrogen lines, which is the defining signature of a Type 1b supernova. However, helium lines are present. This feature distinguishes Type 1b from its close relative, Type Yc, which lacks both hydrogen and helium. The presence of helium is included in early spectral observations and helps astronomers classify these explosions. The aftermath typically leaves behind a neutron star or black hole depending on the mass of the progenitor. The expanding debris enriches the surrounding interstellar medium with heavier elements, contributing to the chemical evolution of galaxies. Type YB supernovae are crucial for understanding stellar evolution, mass loss in massive stars, and the role binary interactions play in shaping the destinies of some of the universe's largest stars. Type Ike supernova is one of the most energetic and fascinating explosions in the universe a dramatic endpoint for massive stars that have lost both their hydrogen and helium envelopes before collapse. Like other core collapse supernovae, Type 1c events result from the gravitational implosion of a massive star's core when nuclear fuel runs out. But the distinct absence of both hydrogen and helium in their outer layers sets Type Ike apart in the cosmic taxonomy of stellar deaths. Stars that produce Type Ike supernovae start life with masses several times that of our Sun. Throughout their lifetimes, they fuse lighter elements into heavier ones in a series of nuclear burning stages. Unlike less massive stars, these giants shed their outer layers through powerful stellar winds or through interactions with a close binary companion. In the case of type Ike progenitors, this mass loss is extreme. Both the hydrogen and helium layers are stripped away, 
exposing deeper, heavier elements before the star reaches its final collapse. When the iron core at the center of such a star becomes too massive to support itself, it collapses catastrophically. The core implodes under its own weight, forming a neutron star or black hole. The rebounding shockwave blasts the remaining layers outward in a cataclysmic explosion. Because the hydrogen and helium have been removed, the resulting spectrum lacks lines from both elements. A defining observational signature of a Type I supernova. Type IC supernova A are not only important for understanding the life cycles of massive stars, they are also connected to some of the most extreme cosmic events known. In certain cases, Type IC explosions have been linked to long-duration gamma-ray bursts (GRBs), brief flashes of immensely energetic radiation thought to originate during the collapse of a rapidly spinning massive star. Studying Type IC supernovae provides insight into how massive stars evolve, lose mass, and enrich the universe with heavy elements long after their dramatic deaths. Type II Pi supernova represents one of the most recognizable and well-studied explosions in the universe. These events mark the core collapse of a massive star, typically one at least eight times the mass of our Sun, when it can no longer sustain nuclear fusion at its center. What makes Type II P unique is the behavior of its brightness after the explosion. It exhibits a long, flat plateau period, where the luminosity stays nearly constant for weeks. This plateau reveals important clues about the star's inner structure, and the physics of its explosion. Stars that lead to Type II P supernovae still retain much of their outer hydrogen envelope at the time of collapse. Over millions of years, such massive stars burn heavier elements in their cores. When iron begins to dominate the core, fusion halts. Iron cannot produce energy through fusion. Without an energy source to support it, the core collapses under gravity in less than a second. Protons and electrons are crushed together to form neutrons, releasing a shockwave that races outward. This shock expels the star's outer layers into space at tens of thousands of kilometers per second. The plateau in the light curve emerges because the expelled hydrogen envelope becomes hot and ionized. As the expanding material cools, the recombination of hydrogen releases energy at a nearly constant rate. This process sustains the light output for several weeks, creating the characteristic flat top luminosity profile that defines type 2p supernovae. During this plateau phase, astronomers can study how shockwaves interact with the star's hydrogen envelope, offering a direct window into the physics of core collapse. Afterward, the light fades more rapidly as radioactive decay becomes the primary energy source powering the remnant's glow. Type 2 P supernovae are critical for understanding the life cycles of massive stars, the mechanisms of core collapse, and the synthesis of heavy elements dispersed into interstellar space. They remind us that even in death, massive stars contribute to the ongoing evolution of the cosmos. Type 2 L supernova is a dramatic stellar explosion that marks the final moments in the life of a massive star, one that has retained some, but not all, of its outer hydrogen envelope. Much like other Type 2 supernovae, it begins with a core collapse when the star's nuclear fuel is exhausted. But what distinguishes Type 2 L from its Type 2 P counterpart is the shape of its light curve. Instead of a long, flat plateau, the brightness of a Type 2 L supernova declines steadily and almost linearly after its peak, a signature that reflects its unique physical conditions. Massive stars spend millions of years fusing lighter elements into heavier ones. When they build up an iron core, fusion no longer produces energy. Deprived of outward pressure, the core collapses under its own gravity in less than a second. This catastrophic implosion produces a shockwave that rips through the star's outer layers, expelling them into space at tremendous speeds. The outer hydrogen envelope, though not as thick as in Type II P progenitors, still contributes to the explosion's early brightness. In Type II L supernovae, the hydrogen envelope is less massive. As a result, the shock-heated hydrogen cools and becomes transparent more quickly, and the light emitted begins to fade in a more uniform, linear decline. This contrasts with the extended plateau seen when a massive envelope recombines slowly over time. The linear decline in brightness gives astronomers important clues about the progenitor star's structure and mass loss history. Stars that produce Type II L supernovae likely shed more of their hydrogen before death, through stellar winds or interaction with a companion star, leaving just enough hydrogen to be classified as Type II 
but not enough to sustain a plateau. Type 2 L supernovae help scientists map the diversity of stellar deaths, revealing how differences in mass and composition shape the final explosive chapters of massive stars. By studying their light curves and spectra, astronomers piece together the last days of stars that once shone brightly in the night sky. Type the Sacnusian supernova is one of the most striking and unusual types of stellar explosions observed in the universe. Like other core collapse supernovae, it begins with the death of a massive star, one that has exhausted its nuclear fuel and whose core has collapsed under gravity. What makes type Tamasquaven distinct is not the core collapse itself, but the environment surrounding the star at the moment of explosion. The designation Idai refers to the supernova's narrow spectral lines, particularly of hydrogen. These narrow features are not produced by the star's core. Instead, they arise when the high-speed blast wave from the exploding star collides with dense shells of material previously shed by the star during its late evolutionary stages. These shells can be the result of intense stellar winds or episodic outbursts, in which a massive star ejects large amounts of gas into the space around it long before it dies. When the supernova shockwave crashes into this dense circumstellar material, it creates a prolonged interaction that converts kinetic energy into light. The result is an extended and luminous light curve, sometimes brighter and longer lasting than typical supernova. The N in E in stands for narrow, referencing the narrow emission lines seen in spectra, which indicate that the material being lit up is moving comparatively slowly material that was ejected long before the final explosion. Type to Sikun. Supernovae serve as cosmic laboratories for understanding mass loss in massive stars. Their unique signatures offer direct evidence that some stars undergo intense periods of instability and shedding in their final millennia. These explosions also help astronomers investigate how the immediate surroundings of massive stars influence the observed properties of the supernova itself. By studying type de Kossowood and supernova, scientists gain insight into the dynamic end-of-life behavior of massive stars and how they interact with their own ejected material, revealing a more complex and varied picture of stellar death than previously understood. Type 2. B supernova represents a transitional class of stellar explosion that bridges the gap between classic hydrogen-rich core collapse supernovae, like type 2P and type 2L and the hydrogen-poor explosions of Type 1b and IC. In a Type 2ib event, the progenitor star has lost most but not all of its outer hydrogen envelope before core collapse. This partial loss leaves just enough hydrogen to give a brief early signature but not enough to sustain the long, hydrogen-dominated features seen in typical Type 2 supernovae. The life story of a Type 2b progenitor begins with a massive star, often more than eight times the mass of the Sun which evolved through successive stages of nuclear burning, fusing hydrogen into helium, helium into heavier elements, and so on. During its late life, the star experiences significant mass loss, which may happen through strong stellar winds or through interaction with a nearby companion star. These processes strip away most of the hydrogen that once enveloped the star, leaving a reduced outer layer of hydrogen surrounding a helium-rich core. When the core finally succumbs to gravity, the iron core collapses, triggering a powerful explosion. At the earliest moments, the light and spectra show traces of hydrogen, indicating that some of the outer layer remains. However, as the explosion evolves and deeper layers are revealed, hydrogen lines fade, and the spectrum begins to resemble that of a hydrogen-poor Type 1b supernova. This spectral evolution is the defining characteristic of a Type 2b event, because Type 2b supernovae transition in their spectral signatures over time they provide valuable insight into the role of mass loss in massive stars and the mechanisms behind envelope stripping. These explosions serve as natural laboratories for testing theories of binary interactions, stellar winds, and the interplay between a star's internal processes and its outer atmosphere. Type 2 B supernovae highlight the diversity of core collapse outcomes and show that stellar deaths are not uniform, but shaped by each star's unique history and environment. Pair instability supernova is one of the most extreme and energetic explosions that can occur in the universe. But it only happens under very specific cosmic conditions. Unlike the more common core collapse or type Wea supernovae, pair instability events occur in exceptionally massive stars. Stars with masses roughly between 130 
and 250 times that of the Sun. These immense stars are so hot and energetic in their cores that their internal physics behave in ways completely different from ordinary massive stars. As a very massive star evolves, its core becomes dominated by extremely high-energy gamma-ray radiation. At these extreme temperatures, gamma rays can spontaneously convert into pairs of electrons and positrons through a process called pair production. This conversion suddenly removes some of the radiation pressure that was supporting the star against gravitational collapse. With pressure reduced, the core begins to contract. This contraction raises temperatures and densities even more, leading to a rapid increase in thermonuclear reactions. Instead of collapsing quietly into a neutron star or black hole, the runaway fusion releases more energy in seconds than the star can contain. The result is a colossal thermonuclear explosion that tears the entire star apart. Unlike most other supernova types, a pair instability supernova leaves no compact remnant. No neutron star, no black hole. Just an expanding cloud of debris. Because these explosions completely unbind the star and release vast quantities of heavy elements, they are also thought to have played a significant role in the early universe. The first generation of stars, massive metal-poor giants formed shortly after the Big Bang, may have ended their lives as pair instability supernovae, seeding the cosmos with elements for later star and planet formation. Pair instability supernova are rare, and only a handful of candidates have been proposed in modern observations, such as the unusually luminous SN2007 by A. Studying these explosions not only tests our theories of stellar physics but also offers insight into the earliest stages of cosmic history. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if you would like to see more videos like this one. Thanks again. Goodbye.